What's up everyone, it's DV. So today I am actually going to show you how I edit. I'm not gonna show you how to edit because it's not the definitive guide to the only way to edit. This is how DV edits his videos and I'm still learning, it is a learning process. I've been editing for years, but not consistently until I really, really started grinding my channel. And I've used a lot of different tools. I actually prefer Premiere Pro. Now it is a paid product. So if you're on the site, you can click buy now and we're gonna go over here. So we don't want Creative Cloud for teams. These are for teams. This is if you're gonna have multiple licenses go to all all creative plans it is not $33 a month for Premiere Pro so you're gonna go to see all creative cloud plans and then you're gonna go to individuals so you'll just need to kind of navigate through their site a little bit and then we'll go into like video and you can see here Premiere Pro is $20 a month so it's 21 bucks a month it is worth it 100% um, if you are really trying to get into videos now if you can't afford that and you're just really desperate and there's $10 a month so one thing I will tell you Premiere Rush is really great for kids so if you're a parent watching this and you want your kid to actually learn how to edit or even if you're younger and you just don't have it, you know, uh, money, but maybe your parents are willing to spend 10 bucks for you. 10 bucks is not bad. And Premiere Rush is what zombie my seven year old uses. So I actually showed him literally like I only showed him for like 10 minutes tops tops. I showed him 10 minutes and he got it and he was he's now editing on his own. He does have struggles every now and then it's not full. It's not bulletproof. There are some things that he kind of struggles with every now and then, but that's with any kind of application. You're going to still struggle a little bit every now and then. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, is the tool to use unless you really want to use something like Vegas. That's another option. So you can check out Sony Vegas. It's a editing um, software that, you know, I think I think Terabyte uses um, Vegas, but pretty much the majority of the YouTube industry uses Premiere Pro as their go to tool. So if you want to be like every other YouTuber, pretty much every other YouTuber uses Premiere Pro. Or if you're on Mac, if you're on Mac, you can also check out Final Cut Pro. That is a really, really great tool. But today I am focusing everything on in Premiere Pro. One thing though, before I move into this, so if you're like, well, I can't, I can never edit because it's going to cost money. So there's the photos app and you can see this is what it looks like, right? So this is the photos app and you can see some screenshots that I have from um, September, you could actually create a video in here. So you see this new video button? So I can click new video, new video project. Most people don't know that Windows Photos actually has a video editor inside. So I can click and I can start a new blank project. Um, I'm gonna call this my, you know, my first Roblox video and then okay. And then you can just add stuff. You can add photos to it. You can add um, videos to, you can add video clips to it. So so they've got a little two minute video here and then you can just put it to your storyboard and you drag stuff in, you can edit and then you can save this out as a video. So I'm not going to go into this yet. I might actually do a tutorial on how to use Windows Photo because there's a lot of you that need a video editor for free and don't like using watermark. Because a lot of you are actually using these, you know, these trials that have watermarks all over them. And I'm sure you would love to know how to edit videos for free. And, I, and look, look out for that video a little bit later. And I will do a video on how to use Windows Photo to edit your game videos. But today, again, we're focused on Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and launch Premiere Pro. So you can see I've got a bunch of projects here. I'm actually just, I just finished one of my projects. I just finished one of my recordings. So I've got a new project here. I'm going to click new and what my video is about. It's all about tips and tricks. And it's my, I think it's my like third one. So I'm going to call it tips and tricks three. So you're going to see this. So this might look like a airplane control panel. Like it just looks crazy, right? There's so many controls. There's so many windows. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Don't be intimidated. Only you're only going to use what you need. So this is what it should look like when you first come in. So I'm going to actually import a video here. And this looks like it right here. So I'm gonna go and open that. So there we go. And I can just drag that over, right? So I'm gonna drag that over to the timeline. So you see, I have a timeline now and I don't really need to see this. So I'm just gonna slide this over cause I don't really need to see that. And we're gonna slide this over so we have some more space. All right, and then we don't need this. So I'm gonna slide this over so we can see the screen here. So we're only gonna see, this is our preview of the video. So if I see this little blue thing right here, if I scrub that and you can hear my, you can hear my voice like being scrubbed very quickly. Sounds because it's it's just kind of zooming through it all. So what I like to do is here is the timeline here. This is my video. And this is my audio. See all these audio tracks. Um, and then you got this thing right here at the bottom that you can zoom in and zoom out. So this is zooming out. So you can see the full length video. I recorded an hour video. And then I'm going to zoom in. And now you can see this is the first minute. So we're, we're getting down to like the seconds here. So this is, this is the first second and then this is the second second. So this is two seconds of video right here. Two seconds. That's two seconds. So you can, you can get, you can zoom in and out of times. So how I like to edit, I like to double click on these so I can see like a little bit more information about them. You can see these, this, these are audio spikes, right? These are audio spikes. So I like to use the razor tool. The razor tool will let you cut pieces of the video. So if I did this, see, these are all slices of the video. And what that does, is it lets me cut out stuff. So like if I wanted to delete all this stuff, I could, or if I wanted to just delete this section, I can, right? So I'll just delete these. 
But way the way I like to edit is I like to cut out stuff that is silent. So see, there's 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 a bunch of chatter here, a bunch of chatter, and then I kind of pause. I was probably thinking about something. I was probably doing something, and so I'll delete that so that there's no pause. So if you come back here, I start out and I probably say, "Hello, everyone is DV." Or, What's up, everyone you know, is DV. Right, and then over here, if I undo what I did, it's gonna be this awkward pause. Tricks, and uh, they're both tips and tricks. And so watch this. If I tick that out tips and tricks and uh, some of these are it just sounds so much smoother and it sounds like I know what I'm talking about <laughs> so you know it just sounds so much better so it shows I'm concentrating I show I have a lot more energy that way but watch this keep watch this gap you know, just in case some of you missed them so the first thing see but now if I did some of you missed them so the first thing I want to it's so much better. So if you're doing a video that, you know, I just, I tend to like a little bit more energy in a video, right? So you're gonna cut that silence out. And then um, again, this is a little scrubber so you can kind of preview stuff. And and then you just delete stuff. So you're just gonna click on that and you're gonna delete it. And then now one thing I wanna tell you is if in order to move this stuff, so you can select the dead space here and hit delete as well. So I just, I'm just hitting the delete key. You can also right click on it and ripple delete. All right, so now we can zoom out a little bit and we're gonna look for more, some, some more dead spots. There's also a shortcut here, it is called C, and what that does is it selects the razor tool. See how, see how the little parentheses on the razor tool? It says C, so that's your shortcut. And shortcuts are your friend. So you're gonna wanna use shortcuts for a lot of stuff. So I'm just cutting out a lot of like dead areas here where I'm just like really, really quiet or maybe I'm doing something, maybe I'm building something. Because quiet parts are when you have people that are like, did the video end, right? So if you're really quiet for a prolonged amount of time, people are kind of moving on in their thoughts. A lot of people are actually watching your video while doing something else. So if you kind of lost them, then you're gonna lose views. So we've got a bunch of empty space here. We're just gonna edit this the way I usually edit it. So you can see I start going a little faster. And then and don't worry about this. Like if you're like, but what if I cut out a scene? What if I cut out a scene that I wanted to show? It's okay because you still have it. So say I deleted stuff like this, I could slide this to the right and then I could just kind of drag this out. So I just, I have it back now. So it's, it's totally recoverable. It's still there. You're not deleting video. You're just deleting, you're cutting out, it's start and end points. That's all you're doing is you're creating start and end points for that clip. So you're just creating little sub clips and we're gonna go really quick. So you can see here, um, um, I'm actually, so I'm doing some things that I typically wouldn't do, but you see how I'm clicking this and then I'm clicking that. There's actually another way to do this. So say I click this and I, I wanna cut out this big section and I don't wanna have to click again to delete. You can click on this, hold down shift and hit the delete key and it'll remove the entire gap for you. It'll remove the clip and the space in between. So instead of doing this, you could do this. See what I'm saying? It's basically just a little shortcut. And those shortcuts will come to you um, in time. And you're gonna, you know, you can Google the things that you wanna do. There's a lot of like little tips and tricks. There's tons of videos on these things. This was all self-taught. So I was learning and I had a couple things I wanted to do. I just, I just Googled them and I found some videos exactly covering what I wanted to do. And that made it so much easier. And usually it's shortcuts or, you know, if I just wanna shift things over very easily, it's usually shortcut stuff that I'm looking for. And then once we're done editing this stuff out, I'm gonna show you how I like to do my audio because audio is a very, very important. It's very important to your video. So if you if you have too low volume or too high volume, there's tips and tricks there. But I'm just going to show you these are going to be the basics of how I like to, you know, edit my Roblox videos. Um, and typically, so if you have multiple monitors as well, you can actually drag this out right here and put it on another monitor. And that that is way better because you need this space, especially for the timeline. So these are all draggable panels. So you can drag these around, you can close stuff there. It's super modular. So like, I don't need all this information. I do like the information panel. So these see this this uh, panel right here, what you can do is over here, you can hit control A to select all the clips and see it says the duration. So currently my video is a 58 minute long video. And that's helpful. So like, you know, if you're editing and you, you know, you're, you're editing your video and you have a target length, you can keep an eye on that and know if you, if you, you know, maybe you're getting too close to that target or you're getting too past that target. If maybe you're too far away from that target and you need to edit more. So I like to, I like to do that a lot. The other thing you can do is while you're editing, you can hit space bar. So this is your respawn as soon as you, you can hit space bar and it'll actually play so the preview. 
and um, I'll show you what I do with audio. So I, I stitch a lot of audio together. Like maybe I messed up on some words. I can stitch audio together really, really easily um, by just cutting out the word that I messed up on. Or sometimes if I'm, I'm repeating a couple things too many times, I'll cut out the repeats and I'll show you how I do that in a minute because we're going to have some repeats, especially the do overs. Now, there's some uh, there's a couple other tips I'll get into that I learned pretty recently. Some some editors will advise you that you should edit backwards. And the reason is, is your last take. So say say you messed up something, you know, you maybe you did like a section like three times instead of editing this way where you're going forward and you're going through the mistake and the mistake and mistake and then you're finally your correct version it just gives you the ability to like oh yeah that's the mistakes i can delete all those sections right so you you get your last your final take you get your best version first and you're editing your best version first and then getting rid of the stuff that you kind of messed up on unfortunately i have yet to create that habit i need to because it does take a lot of time you know be prepared if you create an hour video sometimes it can take if you don't know what you're doing and you're kind of new it could take you three hours to edit an hour video um, very easily especially if you're trying to trim that down to like maybe five ten minutes or however long you're going to do your video or even 20 minutes you're watching your video over and over and over but that's why i like to do this first because i'm cutting out a lot of stuff i don't need to see right so i'm editing a bunch of audio out so that way i don't have to actually watch the video i can just see big chunks and i can just mouse wheel so you see how i'm scrolling through this by the way so how i just realized i'm, I'm doing this and you're, you're probably wondering how i'm doing this so you can either drag the bottom here or you could just use your mouse wheel up and down so i'm mouse wheeling up and down almost like it's it's like this is going this is up and this is down so up to go left down to go right and it just saves you a lot of time when you're navigating so you can kind of scroll through and delete scroll through delete and so on now if you have a lot of background noise so say you have like an air conditioner or you have a microphone that picks up all the background noise um you're probably going to see like these little itty bitty like spikes um the way you look at it is see this line in the middle of this audio bar See that line? And then you could you could ignore this secondary track, but you know, we'll, we'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see these like, they're really tiny little bumps. That's background noise, or that sometimes it's your keyboard or something else. You might even have something that looks closer to this or even something a little bit bigger. Like this right here is a great example of background noise. See this section right here? That is background noise. And if you have that throughout your video, um, just look at this bar right here. So see this little middle bar? If you have stuff that's like low, you know, pretty low in that bar like this, you can pretty much cut it out. It's usually it's usually you mumbling or it's like someone talking in the background or maybe um, a keyboard. Maybe you kind of coughed. <laughs> maybe you kind of like cleared your throat. Now, when you're recording your videos, one thing you can do, there's a there is a trick that a lot of um, professionals use when recording. If they have a retake, what they do is they clap or they'll clap twice um, so that they have a spike in audio so you can see a bookmark. So you'll see this line that goes straight all the way up. So as long as you're not gonna be annoying like you know people in your house or something by clapping all the time, you can actually do that and it'll actually, it'll, you know, you'll see this giant spike in audio. And that way it's like a bookmark for you that you know when you import the video, that's an edit point that you should probably cut out. So that means it's probably a you know, a bad section. So you can do little markers in your audio that way by making really, really loud sounds. Again, it's not something I do because I think, you know, claps kind of annoy me. <laughs> I'd rather do it this way. Um, a little lazy about that. I don't really want to go through that. But if you really want to save yourself some time editing, that's another great technique to use. Now, as you are starting out, this might be a little intimidating for you. So you don't actually have to cut out such large gaps that I'm doing. So you can see here, I'm, I'm you know, cutting out seconds now. So you can actually, you just, you know, I would, I would say just cut out really, really big gaps, just like anyone else would, and not worry about what the level of editing I'm doing. I'm just showing you how I like to edit. In case you are already editing your videos and you're looking for ways that you can maybe improve your content, this might be a cool way for you to do it because it just makes it a little bit snappier. So like if you sound really tired in your videos, if you sound really lazy, tired, boring, hey guys, you know, I'm just doing my video and um, yeah, so over here, you know, and it gets really slow, you gotta do this. Or else your video and people are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep, bro. And uh, that's a problem because you don't want them going to sleep. You want them watching your video. So if you think, you know, if your videos don't have that problem, maybe you already have a lot of energy in your videos and you're just like talking like, blah, blah, you know, you're just going, 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 going. Like if you're a Devon, if you haven't seen Devon, Devon is like, I don't know what he drinks. He, he drinks these crazy energy drinks that don't exist. I think he's from, you know, maybe another planet because he is so full of energy and he cannot stop. He just goes and goes and goes. And I swear it's, it's, it's something in the water 
water or something, man. But he's, uh, you know, if uh, unless you're really energy, you know, naturally energetic like that, and you can keep someone really, really alive in your videos, then, you know, maybe not having to uh, do this would be okay. So if you don't have really, really big gaps in your video and you don't have a lot of pauses, you don't say a lot of ums. So, so if you're saying a lot of ums, so this is another way that you might wanna do is like, if you have a lot of um, uh, and you say the word, so say, if you say certain words a lot or if you stutter or if you repeat words a lot, this is a great way to do it. You might wanna go back through and just cut those repeats out, cut the ums out. You sound so much more professional. Like, you know what you're doing if you cut all your ums out. Like, um is actually one of the worst things you can do in a conversation because it really sounds like you're you're slower. You just sound a little slow. Like, you just can't keep up with the information in your head. You know, just like me right now, I'm like, uh, because I'm trying to figure out how to explain it, but it doesn't sound like it's, it's professionally scripted. It doesn't sound like, it just sounds too, it sounds like you're just trying to talk just to talk versus having something specific to say. All right, so we've cut out all the gaps. So we cut out all the gaps and now I've got to just go and start playing through this and edit it out. So I usually just go and watch it through and then I just edit as I go. So if I don't like something that I'm hearing or doing, I will edit that out. So I'm going to probably brush through most of this stuff and then I'm going to show you the next stage of all this. All right. So I've edited this down to a point where I really, really like it. And now what we got to do is check the audio. So you can see here, this is the full, you see how many slices I've done. That's a lot of slices. And this is only a, this is only a 20 minute video. But we hear we got this audio meter, right? So if I hit play, what's up, everyone? It's DV. So you can see so how I it's, to give you some. See how it's like in the yellow. What we want to do is bump that up because it's not loud enough. It's not loud enough. So what you can do is you can use a tool. We, we, what we do is we use the track meter here. So I'm gonna go and show you what this looks like. So this is a this is a track mixer. So audio track mixer, and you can access that in here. So you can go to window and just open up uh, audio track mixer and just click it and it'll appear as a window and you can move this wherever you want. Um, I have it here. I can actually move it here if I wanted to, um, right next to the meter. And these are all the different channels. So see, this says A1, A2, A3, A3, and then master. So if I wanted to bump all audio up evenly, I could do it with the master. But here, but here you can see it says A1 and A2. Well, my voice is on A1. So we're gonna mess with A1 right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up and I usually bring it up all the way to the top. And then I bring it down. What's up, everyone? See how I'm like flatlined. So it's deep. So it's too loud. So we, you, you don't want to see your voice in the red a lot or else it gets really, really like um, vibrating. It gets like really overblown. So what's up, everyone? It's DV. So I wanted to give you some tips and tricks in Roblox Island. Some of these are actually familiar. You want to stay in the yellow. To many of you. So I get that. But we're going to cover a bunch of stuff and hopefully you learn. And it's OK if you dip into the red every now and then. But look at this yellow line that stays up there for like a second. It's got about a second delay. Learn something new. Even that is that is where you're peeking at. And playing Roblox Island for, for some you can time. See here I too. always try to find something you may not have known. I always try to find. And you don't want that in the red too much. So I could actually bump it up a little something. bit more. But here we go. So before I begin, be sure to hit that. So that's good. That's a good spot to be. And then music, I generally put music on A2. So I, I know as soon as I put the music in, I'm gonna want that lower because it's gonna blast your ears. It's always too high of DB. So I always bring this down. So I always bring the music track down because music should be used as a filler. So when you have moments where you're really, really quiet, you wanna have music there. That way they know the video hasn't ended. You're still talking, you're still showing something. There's something for them to hear in the background because assume that everyone is listening to you while they're doing something else, right? A lot of my subscribers are actually not even watching the video or they're playing they're playing games while they listen to me. So they're actually not always watching me um, you know, head on. So they might have me on their iPad while they're playing on the computer or they have me on the browser while they're playing on the computer. So you have to assume that they're not always watching. So you always wanna have some kind of filler in the background. So time lapses with nothing are death to your video. They're gonna go and change it because it's too silent. So you gotta fill in the music, but music should be only filler. Now for time lapses, you can actually bump the music up. So you're gonna be controlling things and through both this little track meter and through video clips. So if I go and uh, shrink this down so I can kind of see a scene, if maybe I've got like no voice over here, see this little line here? This is actually a clip um, audio meter. So this is a clip's volume. So I can drag this up and down to increase the, the sound so I can actually blow this out. So if I were to play this right now, your ears would be ringing 
because that's maxed out. So it's maxed out on top of my maxed out. So you're doubling up on the dBs. You're doubling up on the the sound. So you can boost the audio. So maybe this is a really, really, you know, quiet clip. You can boost it all the way up or maybe it's quiet music. So especially on my music tracks, when I'm doing time lapses, I bump the audio up on my music tracks while I'm silent, while my voice is silent because you don't want the music drowning out your voice. You don't want a scenario where your music is so loud that you, no one can hear what you're saying. So you want to keep, again, music's there, music's there for the background. It's not for the foreground. So keep music in the background. It should be lower than your voice. So I'm gonna bring some music in. So we're gonna bring this track right here. We're just gonna drag it. I'm just dragging this from my desktop. And you can see right here, it's just like the it's just like the voice. You gotta look for the silent spot. So you see how it takes a while for it to actually load and start. So we're gonna delete that and we're just gonna drag it so that it starts the music up right away. So let's go ahead and play. What's up everyone, it's DV. So I wanted to give you some tips. So you see where it's at right now. So let's go ahead and bring this up so you can see how loud the music is. What's up everyone, it's DV. So I wanted to give so it's about negative 33 and negative 36. So we wanna bring that up, give you some tips and tricks in Roblox. It should be about, uh, I usually keep it about negative 30. So, and then some of these are actually familiar to you. It's okay if it dips up a little bit to the 27. Now you do need to check for any of the loud spots of the music. So once the stuff, see how it's like pretty calm right here and then it starts spiking here. You need to test that too. So let's go check that out right now. Hit button if you are new and let's go. So first up, I wanna tell you, about, that's good. So that's not too bad, it's not too loud. Now let's look for some of these peaks over here. What happen is after I spawn in, so say I spawned in and my voice is still hitting the red. So you're going to be able to hear me over the music. Now, this is incredibly important. If you have mumble spots, if you start mumbling in your videos, your music could actually drown out your voice. So if that's the case, you do need to bring it down. Now, what you could do is if it's only that particular section. So maybe you have a section of video that you really start mumbling on. Just slice the just slice the music like this. So say it's this section right here that you really mumbled and then just drag it down. So it's a little quieter. So watch. I'm going to show you what I mean. Every other. And what's gonna happen is after I spawn in, so say I spawned in, or I could bump it out, maybe your voice is too loud. Please really space it out so it's not as visible. So you see how I'm doing like every other. And what's gonna happen is after I spawn in, so say I spawn. So you can also reset it. So say if you move this line around too much and you're like, I don't know what I did, just right click on it and remove attributes and it'll reset it just like it was before. So just again, right click, remove attributes. Now, if you wanted to apply, so say you made some changes, you're like, but, but DV, this is perfect. I want it like this and this. Just right click on it, copy it. So just right click, almost like you're copying the audio and then paste it on top. It's like select another video clip, just paste another clip and then paste attributes right on top of it. And it'll bump the audio too. So you can actually copy and paste attributes. So like if you're scaling video or something, so like say I've got a section in here that I wanted to scale up, I could do that. Um, I'll show that in a little bit because we got a couple sections we need to add. But you see this ending right here of this clip, this, this audio kind of trails off, right? It kind of trails off. So I actually don't want that. I actually want to keep music in the background. I don't want it to fade out. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now I've got my start is actually clean. My end is actually clean. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down alt while I drag. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually duplicate the clip. See this? I've got another copy here. I'm holding down alt right now on my computer. It might be a command if you're on a Mac, um, but it might be the command key if you're on a Mac. But here I'm actually holding down um, alt still, my left alt key and I'm dragging and I'm letting go. Now I've added another copy of the same clip and then I'm gonna select both and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm selecting both and then I'm gonna just make sure there's no gap in music too. So see that right there? So I can just drag that over to the left. And now I've got four music clips at the bottom here. But you see, it's not filling, it's not filling in 20 minutes of uh, video yet. So I'm just gonna do that again. And now we're good here. I'm gonna delete the excess. And then see this little, this little thing right here? I haven't shown you this, but you can actually adjust things again with this little, see this little arrow? If I were to do it on the, where it's the arrow's pointing to the right and I drag, it would actually extend it. And if I do it when the arrow is pointing left, it would actually shorten it. Now it's cut off, now it's clean. So this is where the video ends. And it's about 20 minutes in, 20, almost 22 minutes in. And I've got music, so now we can listen. What's up everyone, it's DV. So I wanted to give you some tips and tricks in row. So that's good. You just, again, you wanna make sure there's no gaps inside between the audio clips, cause it'd be a little weird. You shouldn't have any gaps in your actual video. Um, where it's just dead space. So this is actually a really clean video. Now what we need to do is I always add in one more thing and you don't have to do this, but I like to do it, which is the like and subscribe little notification thing. So I'm dragging that in right now. And unfortunately, if it's airing, I gotta put it inside the sources. One sec here. So I'm dragging that movie clip in. We're gonna drag that in. 
and it's got a little sound effect with it. So we just wanted to make sure that got included. Now we need to find where I actually say like and subscribe. So we'll just move it right there. And smash the subscribe button if you are new and let's go. So first, if you wanted to speed up this animation, I have one more trick for you. This is a little bit more advanced, but it's just, it's super cool. Uh, it's called a rate stretch tool. Um, you can also just right click and use duration. So if you want to speed it up, you can use duration. But I like to do this because it's cool because I can just, I can kind of eyeball it instead. But you click this and then I can actually drag this so that it goes faster. Watch this. And then smash the subscribe button if you are new and let's go. So first up, way better, way cleaner. It feels like it's on time. And so that's that's a really cool way to do it. Again, if, you, if you're doing a time lapse, very similar. You can click on the video clip you want to speed up and then go to speed and duration. So you're just right clicking on it, going speed and duration. And you're gonna use this a lot. So a lot of you would like to use uh, time lapses, especially on Roblox or game videos. So if you're gonna do that, or if even you wanna slow it down, you could just say it's like 50% speed. So you can see the duration is now eight seconds instead of the original. The original is four seconds. You can also set if it's exact timing, say it needs to be exactly 15 seconds, you can do that. So you can click okay, and now it is exactly 15 seconds. And it just stretched out my video clip and you can see it's now at 29.78% of the length uh, of the speed. So that's the, it's a lot slower now. So 28.79, you know, or whatever it is, whatever the timing is. And you could drag this up and down all you want. Um, I, if you're speeding something up you know, you could do 200, 2000 uh, percent speed and it'll, that's like, that's not even a second. So you can do whatever you want there. I'm going to go back to using the rate stretch tool though, because that's really nice to use like button and smash the subscribe button if you are new and let's go. So first up, I want, and then the last piece is you're ready to go, right? You watch this all. So the last piece, you're gonna pretty much watch the video and you're gonna preview it and you're going to export it. So when you're ready to export, you can just go to file and export media. And I actually, so my settings are always gonna be Format H.264, so I use uh, encoding of H.264 because it's just, it's MP4, it's a great encoder, um, it's reliable. I do high bit rate for mine because I want it to be super high. So you, so you can change your output name so, and tell it, tell it where, you, where you want it. So I have got a, I've got mine on my desktop so it's easy to find. But one thing I do, I do change one thing. So by default, it's gonna match the source. So whatever your source was when you re recorded. Now, if you haven't watched my OBS video, go watch that. I'm, I've linked it in the description so you can go check that out. It is a great way for you to record gameplay. But you see right here, my target bit rate is always gonna be 10, which makes no sense because my source is way higher. I actually do, I record at 20. I record at 20,000 uh, kilobits per second or 20 megabits per second. So I'm gonna switch this back to 20. So that's the original, right? So now that it turns the preset to custom, that's the only thing I change in here. That's the only thing I change below. And then I go ahead and export and it's gonna take a little while to export. And then once it's done, you're ready to go to upload your video. Now, I would always advise watch your video before you upload. It's always a good idea. But I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Take it easy.